Thank you very much for inviting me to this panel. And I was very, very interested to listen to the voices from the field. Thank you for the opportunity to view this film. Last year, I was among 152 signatories of the letter to UN seeking commission of inquiry into Iran's 1988 extrajudicial executions of thousands of political prisoners that called states uh, that the families of the victims, survivors, and human rights defenders are today the subject of persistent threats, harassments, intimidation, and attacks because of the attempt to seek information and to seek truth. This letter brought to me many memories, stories of many people in different parts of the world who lost their lives for their political, ethnic, religious views and identity whose memory shaped also my history, history of genocide, history of gulags, where, and history of region where I live, and the current process where we are living with attempts by some states to rewrite and distort history, and even deny memory to closed ones and descendants, and violating their the most inherent right, right to truth. Indeed, our human his history is marked with massacres, and unrecognized and unpunished crimes, with the situations when atrocities are not only unpunished, but those who are, uh, committed this, uh, the whose leadership it is committed, has been uh, heroes, have become heroes in the country, and are remembered by the political establishment as saviors of the country, as leaders to follow. But that's not with people in these countries. The closed ones, the relatives and dear ones who have been killed, and not for humanity, as the memory of injustice and crimes and denials forms moral history and obligations to seek justice if we want our civilization to continue. It is hard to find a region in the world that has not have mass graves, which may be a result of repression, conflict, or linked to criminal activities. They may be a result of natural disasters, pandemics, but they always embody human rights violations. Traveling in many countries in my capacity as special rapporteur, I was always called for meeting by mothers and relatives of those family members who have been unjustly killed for their political views or being minority or uh, a religious group. And the centrality and significance of the preservation of graves of violent and unlawful deaths holds deep in people's experience and narratives of their daily lives. The emotional, personal, religious, social, legal, and historical significance of mass graves cannot be over, over, overstated for the families of who's buried there, for the survivors and their community, for the countries concerned, and for all of us in humanity. Despite, despite the, the global scale and their significance to so many Far too little has been done to ensure respectful handling of mass graves. Many left unacknowledged, unprotected, unpreserved, and even covered up, discredited or destroyed. And mentioning that in public becomes crime. Mass graves are places of evidence, critical to effective pursuit of formal, in, formal justice. They hold the remains of those who denied their identity and death. They are spaces for memory for the family members. They are places for public record, proof that heinous events took place which must never be forgotten. As Special Rapporteur writes in her uh, uh, report, there are crimes depositories of evidence of likely growth of human rights violation in working thus investigative and formal accountability obligations. The mass grave suggests that remains too were handled unlawfully, intended to obstruct uh, not only reparation to loved ones, but formal injustice too. Amnesty International and other organizations in their recent report and also special rapporteur on extrajudicial summary or arbitrary execution expressed concerns, concerns at reported attempts by Iranian authorities to continue and destroy evidence of past violations, including the reported mass extrajudicial executions of political dissidents of 1988. Caravan mass grave site, which is believed to contain the remains 
of victims of enforced disappearance and summary executions perpetrated in 1988. This order is the latest of the attempt to interfere with evidence of the executions, which have included bulldozing gravestones and the harassment of relatives, such as Mariam Akrami Mon Monafed, who, who are seeking truth and, and, and in count accountability. It is impossible to erase memory, whatever cruel actions are taken. In this connection, there, there is a great, the, the role of the uh, states and international community is critically important. This side must be protected and states should bear responsibility for the protection and treatment of the sides. Mass graves have strong historical and educational value and special human rights mechanisms should be developed and applied to protect the sides. The respectful and lawful handling of the mass graves must be assured, an approach in which diversity of claims, rights and obligations are recognized and in which a fair balance can be struck across those interests. The international community must do much more to support the countries and communities where the sites are located. Coherent human rights framework should be developed in collaboration with the states to ensure respectful and lawful handling of mass graves and victims of the family survivors affected communities, which are central and must be enabled to actively and meaningfully participate in decisions about management of mass graves. All the actions to enhance, enhance and protect human rights are extremely critical now. It must be ensured that present and future generation never forget the heinous crimes that led to these many mass graves and work actively to ensure that repetition of this violence never allowed. We always say never again, but it happens again. We have to call to accountability. We have to call. We, we cannot allow it happen again in any country of the world. Thank you for your attention.